so we have another first seed matchup today it's against a guy named Ryan and he has lockdown defender on pretty much all of his players so he wants to neutralize my signature skills while hogging all of the goodness to himself I'm gonna have to work around that he obviously has a lot of money or a, a lot of time to waste you know doing that whole VC franchise my GM whatever glitch whatever. you know it's going now so I, that's when I even mention it because you guys know I do not promote this stuff and I'm going to be using a different set of jerseys because I'm tired of running into the black on black jerseys even though I haven't ran into any since then but you know that's whatever and I'm not actually going to talk about the gameplay today. I'm going to be talking about a topic that I've been noticing a lot on YouTube over the years. A lot on Twitter. Heck, you probably can even find it on MySpace. But today's topic is about rookies. And why do people have these overinflated expectations of them coming into the league? Like, people expect that, oh... If we get Jabari Park on the Lakers, we're going back to the we're going back to the playoffs. Really? 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 And every time I say something bad about rookies, it's like a couple people they may, you know, like, oh yeah, that, you know, you're right. And then there's gonna be other guys who are like, no, you don't understand. Michael Carter Williams is like totally the rookie of the year. He's averaging this, that, and the other. But what about what does he do for the team? Uh, First off, the only reason Michael Carter Williams is going to undeservedly get the Rookie of the Year award is because he plays on a team that doesn't stress defense and plays a Phoenix Suns type offense. In other words, they have the fastest or second fastest pace in the league, so they just get shots up there to raise their stats. They don't care about winning or losing. They're like that that uh that um the kid that was in the NCAA or whatever who scored like what's his name Jack something he scored like a hundred points multiple times. But if you look at how he scored the 100 points, you'd be like, this is a joke and shouldn't even be allowed. Like, how do you score 100 points inside an official game against a team that's like that's currently doing, playing an exhibition? Like, How are you playing an official game while they're playing? Like, forget it. Anyway, let's get back to the topic, the rookies. Like, for instance, Michael Carter Williams, overrated. He didn't, really, he didn't really do anything for the franchise. They came like one loss away from being the worst team in the league. So, And that's the best rookie you guys have to offer. In my opinion, it's Victor Oladipo, but whatever. Or maybe maybe even, uh, what's his name on the, on the Nets? Mason Plumlee. That's just my opinion. Not because I'm a New Yorker. And I already mentioned Jabari Parker. And, of course, it's Andrew Wiggins. I'm a big fan of Andrew Wiggins. I would draft him number one. That's just my personal opinion. Like, I'm not – I like Jabari Parker, but I feel like he's he's not Andrew Wiggins on defense. He's just, you know, a solid offensive player. And he's a lot. there's a lot of things he could have worked on. I wish he would have came back to Duke, but, you know, he psyched us out until the last second, and then he decided he was going to go back to uh, – he's going he's gonna to go to the NBA instead, like the rest of them. I'm, I was a big fan of Joel Embiid until the injuries. I truly believe he's only going to the NBA because he needs the money, or not needs the money, because he wants the money and doesn't want his injuries to sidetrack his earning potential because everybody's so focused on that second contract that, forget, forget it, I'm not going to get into that. I'm just going to worry about the rookies. How do you expect any of these rookies? These are the best three you guys have to offer. Don't even get me started on that McDermott guy because he, he's not going to be as great as people expect him to be. But how do, you, how do you expect these guys to really change around the franchise and none of them could even win against college students? Like, if you can't even make it to the Final Four in the NCAA tournament against people who have no chance of going to the NBA, how will you expect it to go and play against these actual the actual 400 best players in the entire world? And expect to do something there. Right off the bat. I mean, these guys, the reason why they want them to go back to college is because they need to develop their games. If their games are undeveloped for college, how do you expect them to have a developed game already in the NBA? Like, what are they doing now inside the offseason that's, like, better than learning from Coach K and the rest of them? Like, but that's, that's, it just doesn't make sense to me. And a matter of fact... Let's talk about the rookie, the former rookie of the years. These are, I'm, I'm going to talk about the guys who are the, the past best rookies of all of the people who were drafted 
at each respective year. And I'm going to show you the impact they had in that first year. Damian Lillard, no playoffs. He's good. He made it this year, but last year he didn't make it to the playoffs. Kyrie Irving, he, in my opinion, I got, I got a feeling that I think he's overrated. I think John Wall is better. People wouldn't disagree with me. He was the all-star MVP, but that's as far as it goes. His game's made for all-star game, not for actually winning basketball games. Blake Griffin, the only reason that John Wall didn't win the rookie of the year because Blake Griffin, he had to sit, sit a year out. But other than that, it should have been Blake Griffin, then John Wall, but instead it was Tyreek Evans, who, who who's come up the bench now. Then there's Derrick Rose. He won the MVP award. You know, he's a great player, but n right now he's injured. And I predicted, I predicted that Derrick Rose was not going to be a top three point guard this year. And now who looks stupid? Who looks stupid now? Anyway, um, Kevin Durant, you know, he's probably going to win MVP this year. He went to the finals. Brandon Roy, Chris Paul, Emeka Okafor, LeBron James, MVP, went to the finals. He's a champion. Amari Stoudemire, Pau Gasol, Mike Miller, Steve Francis, Elton Brand, Vince Carter, and then Tim Duncan. You saw how far apart it was before you found another Hall of Famer out of the Rookie of the Year? And between the last 16 Rookies of the Year, there's only three MVPs out of this group, assuming that Kevin Durant wins it, which he probably will. Think about this. I just named 17 Rookie of the Year. And out of the seven, and I actually 18 because John Wall's the unofficial rookie of the year. Out of those 18 guys, only one of them had made it to the playoffs in their first year. And that's because Tim Duncan was playing alongside the Admiral, one of the greatest centers of all time. He was top two or three during the time when Tim Duncan came into the league. So that just tells you everything you need to know. The rookie of the year is, is always going to be overinflated. The fans look forward to it, but they don't look down the line. They expect immediate results, and it does, it's not realistic. It's not realistic at all. And sure, there's plenty of things you could blame. You could blame lack of parity. You could blame the super teams. You could blame the fact that there's too many games, and they're going to hit a rookie wall eventually. But one thing that people forget, as I throw the off-the-backboard alley-oop to Scottie Pippen, but the one thing that people forget is that in the Eastern Conference, it's wide open. Anybody can make it. Teams are making it with negative records. And these rookies still aren't getting there. Look at Kyrie Irving. Look at Kyrie Irving. I'll get into that topic on another day. Because I'm going to start doing some videos where I talk about individual players and what I think about them. I'm going to tell you guys my preseason predictions. I'm going to give you guys a podcast about because uh, it's gonna be a podcast on my playoff prediction because I called some things right. I called the Wizards. I said that the Thunder were not gonna were not gonna sweep the Grizzlies. I said that the um, of course I said the Bulls weren't gonna sweep the Wizards because you know I picked them to win. Um, I called a lot of different things. I said that the Heat would actually sweep, sweep the Bobcats, especially after Al Jefferson got hit with the the plantar fasciitis or whatever in the in the first game. I said after that, there's a there's a thousand percent chance that the Heat are gonna sweep them because they only had one weapon really. I mean, they had some nice pieces, but they only had one weapon. Hey, I'm not gonna get into that right now. I'm gonna get into that into the podcast, and that's gonna be about 20 minutes or so for each conference, probably. I'm gonna be going down them. I'm gonna be going from the second round on the, and I'm gonna talk about my predictions going in, and how seeing as how the, now that the facts have changed, my opinions are gonna change, and I'm gonna tell you guys what I think is gonna happen for the second, third, and potential rounds that I go on. I really, really like the NBA brand. I love NBA basketball. Sure, I play 2K, but that's because it's an extension of the NBA. So I need to get out these ideas because I can just keep writing them on Twitter, of course, and I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna spam your timelines, but you know I'm gonna I'm gonna point out certain things every once in a while. If you're not following me on Twitter, something's probably wrong with you. I, Cause I just be dropping these nuggets, nuggets of gold, and if you're not if you're not there to pick them up. You gotta make all types of incorrect picks. But let me know what you think about these guys who are the next rookies coming in. Who do you guys think is gonna be the best? Let's get some dialogue. Let's get some conversation flowing inside the comment section below. Let's spark some discussion. Let's spark some debates. Let's, uh, you know, of course, respectful ones. Let's see what the general consensus or the general feel is gonna be on the upcoming draft class. Cause I, that's some people I think is gonna be good. There's some people I think are overrated. And inside this game, as you guys can see, he has to foul me because I'm up by one and there's not that much time I could have just stalled it out. So I put in my clutch players and Kevin Durant, who is a great free throw shooter, he just knocks them down. So I'm up by two. 
he has to shoot it. He gets a good look with Stephen Curry, and he misses it. So now he has to foul me again. And LaMarcus Aldridge is a pretty good free throw shooter because I release it so early, and they just say slightly early. It's never very early. I don't know why. So I kind of feel like they just, they just gave me the game. Like, they wanted me to win this at that point. I missed the steal, and he gets another open three, and this time he makes it. He is now only down by two with 2.7 seconds left. Like I just got to inbound it safely. I get to a good free throw shooter, Kevin Durant, who now has a 99 because of the closer rating. And I knock down both of them. So he has no chance of coming back at this point. 85, 81, two seconds left in the game. He can do whatever he wants. There's no four-point play. I won this. And I tip it for good measure, steal it, throw it down court, game over. That was a close game. It had a lot of highlights. I didn't want to commentate over it this time, but that game was a lot of fun. We had a lot of interesting plays. He kept it close. Shaq actually got injured. He had a perfect game, and he got injured. That's crazy. 